go. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission and this week we're going to do a special edition, I'd call it, of Encompass Live. We're going to do the year in review, um, taking a look at what we've done over the past year in, in during, for this um, web program. Uh, program, yeah. I don't know what we call it. <laughs> um, and just going over some all of this, the presentations we've done, just to remind you of the things that have been done out there, give you some ideas, some updates on some of them. Um, just looking over how far we've come in the past year. Um, with me today, as you can see, I have Michael Sowers, who's going to be giving some updates to some of the sessions that he was um, involved with presenting throughout the year. Um, and any sort of a color commentary as needed <laughs> throughout the morning. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Encompass Live premiered the um, very first time January 7th, 2009. So we have been doing this for about a little over a year now. Um, this is actually, this, this particular one today is, is the 48th Encompass Live that has been done. Um, yes, that, does, that means that if you do your math and can count that we did not do one every single week <laughs> of 2009. Uh, we had um, one week that we took off for we, the Nebraska Library Association NLA NEMA conference. We decided not many people would probably be showing up for that one. And during the summertime, we took about a month and a half off, um, maybe five weeks or six weeks, when we were switching for, between two different um, webinar products, online um, products that I'll talk about in a second here. Uh, we have had 678 people show up live to our sessions. And actually counting today, you can add um, five more to that <laughs> if we want to count today's um, statistics. We do have five people watching right now live. <coughs> we have done recordings of all of the sessions that are available out there for people to watch, and they have been watched over 1,250 times. Um, so it's even more than that. We have some statistics that are a little e iffy. So we know minimum it's about... 1250 something um, but we know there's more people watching all the time so we're just gonna go with that for now so it's getting it's very popular um, we've been very successful with it gotten a lot of good comments um, from people so we're very happy that people are interested in um, our new um, program that we're Do, doing does that count the fact that I watched each one three times no oh okay well <laughs> When I did the statistics, I just looked to see if it was watched and if for like more than like a two minutes. Oh, 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 okay. um, I can find out, I can see how long someone watched a session when they logged in. Oh, there was a lot of, you know, logging in and logging right back out, not watching it. So I didn't pay attention to who. Was oh, doing okay. That. Well, we probably don't really know nah. that anyway. Yeah. Um, we did start out using a product, as I said, in the summertime of last year. We switched from one product to another. Centra was a um, online meeting software product that we used, and then that um, our account with that ended, and we decided to go to something new, and it took about a month and a half or so to figure out what we were going to go with and get it set up and ready to go with a new new product, and that was our go-to webinar service that we are currently using now. So that's where we lost a few weeks of Encompass Live sessions. And we're still working out the details. We are. Hey, it works great, I think. I've been, it's been very successful. GoToWebinar is a great product. Um, simple interface over online. It can be used by both PCs and Macs, which is a big issue here for our school libraries. And the recordings that come out of it are strictly um, Windows Media File plot, um Windows Media Player files, which anybody who wants to can watch on any kind of computer. No problem there. So we've had some pretty good success with it. Um, and then there's the URL that is for our main page for Encompass. If um, you want to go and see what, wait, go back to that. Um, what our current, there you go. Um, what our current um, upcoming sessions are, and there's a link there to all of our archive sessions. There's a link for archived Encompass Live sessions, where you can see all 47 <laughs> previous <laughs> Encompass Lives and watch the recordings of the sessions. Um, we also include, when we do the recordings, if there was a PowerPoint presentation, as there is today, that's available. If there are any websites that people went to, we put links to that on there, so you have all of that information for you. Um, sometimes we've had Word documents or PDF documents that have been included as part of a presentation or for more information, and we include links to that as well. So once you go to a recording, you have anything, everything you'd need to get all the information that was given during mm -hmm. that, that session. 
Um, I'll add too, many of the sessions have also been put into our Encompass podcast, mm -hmm. which is audio only, um, but uh, you can subscribe to that also. You can find that on our website. Yes, so if you are a big podcast person, you can just listen. Yep. Okay, so the very first two Encompass Lives that we did whoops, were um, Meet the NLC which is basically trying to just do a basic introduction of the Nebraska Library <coughs> Commission, what we do here, the different departments that we have um, available. And so we had on January 7th, I'm not going to read that entire list, but <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, well, Rod Wagner, the head of the, the director of the Library Commission, and then department heads um, on the 7th, and then on the 14th, we finished up with everyone else from all the other, depart the other major departments here, just giving introductions to what they do, what their departments are, um, what they're all about, what kind of services they offer, what kind of products and things. So if you're wondering, what is the NLC? What is the Nebraska Library Commission? What do we do here? These would be some good sessions to take a look at to get a good general introduction overview to um, the Library Commission and what we do. Okay. Um, our Talking Book and Braille service has done um, three different sessions. They've been very um, active in Encompass Live, which is great, trying to get the word out about what they do. They did a session on the um, talking books that they do, Library of Congress talking books, where you can now download books rather than being sent a little cartridge or cassette. Um, they are now da downloadable books. There's a session about that. And we, they also had um, another session about the assistive technologies for the blind and visually impaired. A husband and wife team who are on staff here at the TBBS, Shane and Amy Burrish, came in and demonstrated how they use technology to access information. Um, for themselves. So that was a very interesting session, mm -hmm. um, seeing that. And then most recently they did uh, Behind the Studio Glass. That was just a couple of weeks ago, actually, where you got to meet some of the staff and volunteers who actually do the recordings of the books and magazines. Um, Scott Schultz brought in Bill Ainsley and Bonnie Feynman, who are two of the volunteers that work down in doing the recordings. And they had some really interesting anecdotes and talking about the history of the, of the service and everything. Um, a little video that um, Scott had put together with Michael's help. <laughs> I was going to say, I heard that video yes. was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> they put together a video that's now available on the commission website. I'm not sure if they put it on the it's TBS on, page. Um, yet. Somewhere yeah. I know it got blogged, and it is on our YouTube account. Right. So, so it's basically like it's about a five minutes. Five minutes. Video introducing you just in general to um, talking book and braille service here at the commission and what's that's all about and how they do that. So that was a really interesting one. I liked hearing the the volunteers talk about it because there's a long history to the talking book and braille service and how they used to do it and how they're doing it now. And um, both Bill and Bonnie have been involved for years and years, so they had a lot of interesting things to say. So if you are interested in this service or if you know someone, a friend, a neighbor, a loved one who could benefit from talking books, um. Take a look at some of these sessions, and they can help you get them um, connected. Um, health information is another service that I, <laughs> that how we have offered some sessions on. Um, in February, on February 14th, it happened to be a. Um, oh, that's right! Day, I yeah, forgot it was, about that. <laughs> it's actually on, I believe. Um, no, it was on February 4th. It was a little oh, before. Okay. It was in February. Feel the love. Free resources from the National Library of Medicine. Um, Marty McGee, who's the Nebraska and Education Liaison for the National Network Libraries of Medicine, came and talked about some of the free resources, free resources online available from the NLM, which is great for people who need that kind of information. And then a little later in the year, we just a few weeks after it actually, we had um, local resources. There are local health information resources put out um, in Nebraska. And... Um, Teresa Hartman is in charge of those and came and talked about those kind of resources. So if you have people involved, interested in needing health information, um, both national and local information, we have two sessions available on that that gave links and tips and information about how to access that information. Um, boards, trustees, friends groups, all something that uh, all, li all public libraries need to be involved in. Um, our library development team uh, Richard Miller and Laura Johnson did a session on library accreditation, certification, library board certification, basically how to get started, what you need to do, what you and your board members um, have to do to go through getting all of that for your library. And then Richard did a specific session on trustee tips, how to get your trustees involved with it. And I think, Michael, you were 
did you go to a, something that he did when he went out somewhere else on trustee tip? Yeah, we did. Session? There was, yeah, I, I, I attended a live version of that session right. once, and then I gave an afternoon session on a completely mm -hmm. different topic. Um, <laughs> sure. But uh, it, it was fun. I, 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 for some weird reason, enjoyed the parts where he went over, like, library law <laughs> in uh, the state. <laughs> Uh -huh. and, and all these weird things that, you know, state law says what the library is responsible for doing mm -hmm. versus what the city might be responsible for doing. Uh -huh. And I remember the one comment was, is um, our city does that for us, but the state law says we're responsible for it. And, and I think the response was, is if the city's going to volunteer to do it for you, let them. Might as well. I mean, you know. <laughs> At least it's getting done. It's getting done. <laughs> um, you know, so, um, but, you know, that's kind of, I have a little bit of a law background, so I think that's why I found it a little interesting. Mm -hmm. So definitely those would be two sessions that you'd want to take a look at if those are things that you need to be worrying about or dealing with um, in charge of at your library. And then just this past November, we were very um, lucky to get Sally Reed, who is, and I'm going to read this exactly because I don't know those acronyms off the top of my head there. <laughs> she is the Executive Director of the American Library Station's American Library Association's newly redesigned Association of Library Trustees, Advocates, Friends, and Foundations. That's the ALTAFF, um, which is a merger of the Friends of Libraries USA, the FELUSA, um, and the former Association of Library Trustees and Advocates that was part of ALA. So um, that was a very interesting session to finding out more about what they're both doing, the, the trust, basically merging trustees, friends, all these kind of things that kind of had stuff to do with each other anyways, but we're separate organizations now being one big um, organization, one big area of ALA. And she had a lot of good resources there of free things, things you can get through their, their um, are they a section? Uh, I don't know how ALA works. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they are. Um, she had <laughs> links to different free resources and help that you can get through them um, for doing friends things and trustees and foundations. So also very good information from her. She had a bunch of slides and PowerPoint presentations. I, I think I have that. to go back and watch that recording. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've been both a trustee and a friends board member, in fact, at the same time. So... Um, <laughs> I, that sounds like there were some great resources. Yeah, and especially since it's this new group, the Al, I don't know if they pronounce it, Altaf. Altaf. Um, so it's doing a lot of new things because of that, and Sally Reed is in charge of that. And I believe it was Rod and Mary Jo did, Rod Miner here did an interview, basically, oh, after she called in and did a nice um, talk for us. You know, I, I'll say Altaf because if I said Alt-Af, I'd be looking for the Af key on the keyboard. <laughs> Okay. Um, computers and technology. We, of course, have Michael Sowers is our technology innovation librarian here at the Library Commission, so we always tap him for these kind of things. Um, and he always brings in some other people. I, I think for both of these you had Diane Wells do it with you. Yes, 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 both of those um, had Diane. And he did two sessions. If you want to go ahead and talk about what you did. Um, well, the, the, the first one there was um, computers, what to know before you buy. Uh, Diane's one of our uh, folks on our comp team here and we do have a web page up uh, on the commission site about kind of talking about okay you're going to go buy computers what version of windows do you get what sort of processor speed do you need how much ram how, you know how big of a hard drive should you have that sort of thing so we kind of did a this guy's a kind of a walk through uh, with that and i think that was even before windows 7 came out so yeah, now pretty now it is so the answer is get a new computer with windows 7 um <laughs> And that was in March. That was in March. Yeah. So, yeah, that was before. Uh, yeah, because Windows 7 came out in the fall. Um, and then, then setting up the computers was in April. The next okay, month yep, next up. month. And setting up your public access computers. A lot of that was kind of um, some security-related issues, how to lock the machine down. And I have an update for that, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, <clears throat> And so, you know, if you're just going to put these computers out to the public, what do you want to do to make sure that they're going to work long term, things like that. Um, the one update I have to that, and let's see if we want to switch maybe to our, uh, I wrote a blog post about this. We'll show this up on the screen here. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll bring us back up on the, the camera too while sure. we're at it. Um, in that session, both... Uh, Diane and I recommended something called Windows Steady State, which uh, for those of you familiar with either the Centurion product or Deep Freeze, basically was a free product from Windows, from Microsoft, for Windows, that would lock your machine down so the patrons could do whatever the heck they wanted, and you reboot the machine and everything goes back to normal. Uh, about two weeks ago, I got a phone call from uh, a Nebraska librarian 
saying, uh, we're about to buy some Windows 7 machines, and which I, you should do. And she said, when I was going to use Steady State, but uh, uh, all the research I've done says Steady State doesn't work in Windows 7. What can I do instead? And I, I got this voicemail and went, what? <laughs> I, I really didn't understand. This was complete news to me. For, I, I, somehow I just totally missed this. Mm. And Steady State basically will work in XP, will work in Vista. It will not work in Windows 7. It won't even install. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I did some research, and it turned out in early beta versions of Windows 7, there was what uh, Microsoft called guest mode, not the guest account. That's different. It's called guest mode. And basically what they had done was they had integrated steady state into Windows 7. They built it right in. And I thought, oh, wonderful, this is great news. And then I found out that when they finally released Windows 7, they took it out. Okay. Thanks, Microsoft. <laughs> um, so, steady state is no longer an option if you get a new machine with Windows 7 on it. And it was the only free solution I know of and could find. Um, so, my response at this point, and, and at the bottom of this article that is on your screen there, the URL is at the top, um, <clears throat> you have three options, uh, or actually two options. One is purchase Deep Freeze or Centurion. Uh, we're, we're back to paying for something. Um, I've used Deep Freeze and have liked it. I've never heard anything significantly bad about Centurion, but I've never actually had my hands on it. Are you one of um, those things that will do discounts through the commission for? Um, I, there's, there's no discounts there's through us that I'm aware okay. of. Um, Centurion doesn't seem to want to list their pricing on the website. Um, but Deep Freeze does, and there is a library rate ah, okay. for Deep Freeze, that and you can there's some sort of discount yes, that libraries you can, can investigate. You can get a ten copy license, ten ten machine license of Deep Freeze uh, with a one year service plan for under three hundred dollars. So it mm -hmm. trust me for the peace of mind, it's worth it. Um, Centurion, um, basically, I would say go with whatever's cheaper. To be completely honest, I think they both do a, a perfectly good job. Um, your other option, uh, which is is a free option but not perfect, which is have your patrons log in as guest, not guest mode, but the guest account in Windows. Um, it, but the downside is you cannot customize that account at all. It has all the security. They they can't do anything. They can't change things. They can't kill things. Whatever. But you can't control what icons are on the desktop. You can't change the wallpaper. You can whatever, whereas these pay-for products will let you completely customize the environment and then lock it down. Mm. So, you know, guest account is your free option, but limited uh, possibilities with it, or you're going to have to spend some money at this point. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, do not let this be the reason why you don't go to Windows 7. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please go to Windows 7 if and when you can, especially if you're buying a new computer. Mm. Uh, Upgrading is a separate issue, which could be a whole other episode um but um, yeah we can we can schedule one i i know who schedules these. um but uh yeah so so that's kind of the update there and i think i'll be going into this probably in my tech talk next week also for for uh those of you who aren't here right now sure so okay we'll go back uh go back to our powerpoint yes. okay and speaking of tech, tech talk, talk as related to computers and technology this is a new um encompass live regular session that we started two, three weeks December. ago. December was the first December one. Okay. December and January. Um, which is going to be a monthly session that Michael will be doing on anything that has come up in the last month technology related that he wants to keep you up to date on. Um, new things, new technology, things change so quickly it's really needed to do this on a regular <laughs> basis rather than like once a year. Um, and including um, sometimes interviews with people. Uh, we're we're going to be three for three on the interviews. <laughs> yes. Um, and this is next week is our next tech talk. Yes. Yeah. Typically we're scheduling those for the last Wednesday of the month, but due to some scheduling conflicts, uh, we've got the on the second to last Tuesday of the month, um, and uh, second to last Wednesday. Sorry. Yes, I said Tuesday. Don't confuse anybody. Don't <laughs> Wednesday. Um, and after forty eight episodes, you all should know that by now. Anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, I've interviewed a librarian from upstate New York, uh, one from uh, Nebraska, I've got another Nebraska librarian, uh, we'll get a little geeky, uh, <laughs> on, and actually touching upon the filtering uh, topic, mm. and um, we're, we're not going to go into the should you filter, should you not filter, that is not the topic, but we have at least one library here in Nebraska that has figured out a way to have very good filtering. 
um, as good as filtering gets um, for free uh, right. on the whole network with central administration. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. And they're the only library I know of that has ever done this. Uh, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, another topic that has been big in Nebraska. Ooh, geez, I don't know for how many years. When when they started five or six at least. Um, six. When was the first one? I'm trying to count the. I, I've seen the one page. I'm trying to yeah. count the number of uh, book covers. I, I think, think this, this is year six or year seven. Yeah. I, I I've lost count a little. Yeah. Bit. One book, one to, one Nebraska program where like you know the idea is that people across the state will all read the same book and then libraries or bookstores will have discussions groups and things all about it. There'll be activities, events, and whatnot. And last year we did um, session on that. A lantern in her hand was last year's one book, one Nebraska. Um, and but they also had one book one Nebraska for kids and teens they pick books for them as well so you can specify if you have a teen group or a children's reading group they can also read the same book so we had sessions on both of those for last year um, they just announced what the one book one Nebraska for this year is um, it, it, I've been working on the website uh, it is the home place by Robert Wright Morris right, I think I got his yeah. name right so, so um, hopefully we will be doing a session on that one coming up um, once they have things more organized as far as they just renounced it like Last week, maybe, yeah, I week think it two, was. Yeah. yeah. So for previous ones, though, you'll can see what was going on last year for the One Book, One Nebraska for adults, kids, and teens. And um, look forward to more of those coming up this year for this year's titles. Mm -hmm. And the One Book, One Nebraska Teens one is that book that's out there, um, I, Unwound. Unwound. Very interesting I, book. I, I want to read, read it. <laughs> <laughs> I read the blurb on the back, and it's a very interesting futuristic It's kind of science fiction-y, yeah. bioethics um, yeah, it, it, it sounds... Definitely will generate a lot of discussion among teens or anyone who reads this book. Um, Unwound, don't know the offer off the top of my no. head, but um, that also has been announced as well on the commission website as that as the teen book. Um, I almost feel like we're Bob and Doug McKenzie with the weather outside. <laughs> um, another general <laughs> bunch of sessions we've done here. Um bunch of things on the web. Um, we're obviously here at the commission doing a lot of things online, on, on the internet, doing our own services, providing them, using what's out there. And so we've done sessions and different things that you can use as well. Um, putting Facebook to work for your library, actually we brought in an outside speaker for that one. Susan Franklin from um, the Hastings College came and talked about how they were putting together their Facebook page for the college. Um, very interesting session on that. So if you are interested about doing Facebook and using it to promote your library's resources and things that you're doing, she did a session on that. Um, and actually mentioned other libraries are doing it as well. If you go onto Facebook, you can search for Nebraska libraries, and there are tons of other libraries that are getting involved in it as well. Um, libraries of Change, and that is a session we've done um, various locations and times around the state last year. Um, basically going over the different web-based services Mostly all web-based, right? Yeah, pretty think, much. Yeah, yeah. That the commission has been using to show you how you can use it. Mm. YouTube, RSS feeds, Twitter, anything and everything you can think of. Um, and we have a website that lists all of the things we do that you can see what we're doing. Um, so that's just a kind of a nice overview, very quick, like maybe five-minute bits about each one, if that. <laughs> um, just a very quick, um, here's all the kind of things that we're using, and you might be able to use them to try it out. Um, Google Maps, uh, Elena Novotny did that session on how to use Google Maps and mashups and things for that for your library. Um, Michael did two sessions about Twitter, all about Twitter, and then a follow-up, more about Twitter tips and tricks. Um, do you want to do your thing or save that for next week? Um, yeah, I, I, I'll just mention real, I, I'll tease. Okay. How's that? We'll, how, we'll, we'll do a tease. Like um, I have been playing with a, a uh, new service called Tweet My PC. Um, and basically what that does is allows me via Twitter to send com commands to my computer at home or any other computer to, like, start print jobs, kill things, send me a screenshot of what my computer looks like, <laughs> make sure my computer's turned on, um, download something for me, I, and I'll kind of try to demo that uh, in next my session week. next week. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in using Twitter for promoting your library announcements, getting connected to your users and patrons and things, both those sessions would be very good to take a look at too. Um, Web Junction is a website that libraries can use to connect and, and learn with each other uh, and they have a specific section of Web Junction, the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, 
I'm sure more rural libraries are better. Um, and I did a session on that specifically highlighting all the sections in there. We have a lot of libraries, obviously, here in Nebraska that are small, rural, one-person libraries. Um, and there's a lot of good resources on the web. They're free and free information. There's articles and discussions and things you can use there. So definitely, if you want to find some more connection to other libraries out there across the country who are in the same situation as you are, as far as being small and rural, take a look at that section session. And then Google Secrets, that was you. That was me again. Yes. Yeah. And Michael did a thing on a bunch of cool things that Google has available. Yes, and Google has a new thing available. Groove. Have you seen this? Groove. It, no. it, or, or no, buzz. no, buzz, buzz. Oh, Sorry, yes, Google buzz. buzz. This was announced yesterday, right? Uh, or maybe two days ago. Um, I don't know if I'll be talking about it next week because it's might so not new. Know enough about it, but, but it's yeah. it's it's basically Google trying to integrate a Twitter friend feed sharing like thing right into Gmail. It, yeah, it, it's, I haven't figured it out myself. I, I've I've already read Backlash and it's like forty eight <laughs> hours old. So um, it's new. And it's it, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but this session was about things established things that Google is doing. <laughs> Um, some things to experiment with, just some services or features you might not know about mm -hmm. that you could use. So good thing if you want to explore Google a little bit and see what it's all up to, um, that Google secret session that Michael did. Um, and Nebraska Access is the um, where the Library Commission ha offers access to purchases databases on behalf of libraries and citizens in the state and offers free access to them to libraries who just register with us. And we redesigned the website earlier this year, uh, earlier last year, and did a um, here introduction to the new Nebraska Access because it did change where things are located, um, where everything is. So if you want, if you haven't seen it yet, which hopefully by now you have, <laughs> you can see what the changes were and how we, we did we it and why it, it happened. It was a long time. Yeah, okay. Ago, oh. yeah. Um, February of last year, so a year ago. Yeah. But the recording is up there so you can see what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did some specific ones about some of these databases within it that had made changes that to themselves, of course. <laughs> databases and services, they always do their own updating. So um, for eLibrary and the Wilson databases, we did two separate sessions on those because they also did upgrades and changes to how their systems work. So. Um, Susan and Alana did those, I believe. Wasn't me. No, no, it wasn't me. Right. Not your job. <laughs> now we have a whole, you know, understandably, of course, we are a library commission. Lots of sessions on reading and books in general that I just kind of gathered up together here. Um, summer <coughs> reading programs. Uh, Sally Snyder here at the library commission is in charge of our children's uh, is our children's librarian, children's books librarian, and she um, gets information out to libraries about the summer reading programs. And she did an interesting session on how the theme is chosen and the history of the summer reading program. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, wondering what it's all about, where it came from, that is a really interesting session. I learned a lot that, you know, I know every summer there's a new title, a new theme, and you do different activities and things to do with that theme. But it was interesting to know why this all came about and where it started and which states did it to begin with and how they got more involved, more states involved in it. Um, that was a very nice little history I, I, of the I program. bet there's committee meetings involved. Yeah, well, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think at the time we did it, Sally was like the president or head of the association or the group oh, that did it. So that's why she was really good into doing that. Um, book groups for adults or kids, uh, Lisa Kelly, our um, had a reference here at the Library Commission. She did a session on that, doing book groups. So if you are wanting to get one started or just want some more information and tips and tricks on how to do it, that's a really good session with a lot of good resources about book groups and how to run them. Um, we also did a general session on just, we had some of our staff get together and just talk about do kind of what they do um, as far as reading, the what to read session. Um, kind of just like a book discussion of here's some new titles we're interested in, here's what I liked, here's what worked for me, that kind of thing. That was a very um, interactive type I session. That one. Yeah, I did too. Somebody else. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were um, out. <laughs> Sometimes I have to have people fill in for me. I'm not here every Wednesday, yeah. and that's okay. Um, teens at the library, their Teen Read Week is avail is um, happens every year, and I actually brought in uh, Sarah Dale Pearsall, who is from Lincoln City Libraries Gear Branch, and she shared what a little history and information about Teen Read Week, and then I explained how they were doing their teen programming. So it's a good kind of introduction if there's something you were interested in doing or thinking about doing at your library. You can get a lot of good tips and, um, from her about how they did it. Um, 
so you can get more involved with what your teens are doing and get them um, more into reading. Um, and of course, the Nebraska Book Festival happens every year. Mary Jo Ryan came and did a nice session on that and intro to it was coming up and what will be, um, who was going to be there, the authors, they were going to have the activities and sessions going on. Uh, I assume she'll do another one for 2010 when that comes up later in the year. I think the book festival is more, yeah, it was in November, so it's in the fall. So that will be coming up. And then we also started another regular session called Great Reads with Sally Snyder. Uh, a few years ago, Sally used to do regular um, video conference type sessions or video recordings of herself talking about books, new children and teen books that are out there that she was liked or she wanted to highlight and get people knowing about. Um, and she kind of had to stop doing that. It just wasn't technically something she was able to do anymore. Um, but now with Encompass Live, we convinced her to she can use us to do a regular session on great reads for teens and, and kids. Um, and she did her first one uh, in November also, right before Thanksgiving. And we're going to have her do that as a regular one, not monthly, like Michael's, of course, because I'm sure good books come out every month. But she, um, a couple of times a year. We'll see how, that, how many times she, you know, when she has a good pile of books ready that she wants to promote out to people. So that will also be another regular session. So if you're looking for some new teen and kids books to promote or that your kids and teens are asking for new titles, take a look at the one session she did last fall and um, look forward to other ones. I'm going to try and tag her for do it again this spring sometime. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I believe she's now doing a weekly blog post called What That's Sally right. Reads. Yes, she is. So even if you don't, uh, you know, if you would hope that you know, her thing was monthly, you know, we've only got so many Wednesdays. <laughs> um, but I do believe once a week she's planning on um, she talking like, about some new books on right. the blog. And I'm sure she do like so. one book each time. Or? I I'm not sure I, if that's your plan. Or I have or... not noticed to that level of detail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so take a look at our blog too, then, and look for what Sally's reading, and um, you'll see in between her great read sessions on here mm -hmm. what she's come across. Money. Of course, everybody needs more money <laughs> for everything they're doing. And we, of course, put together a bunch of different sessions on that, getting grants. Um, Catherine Brockmeyer here at the Library Commission has done, did a great session on seeking grant funds and writing the proposals. That one is a big part <coughs> that some libraries have a stumbling block over. What, how do I write this? How do I convince them to give me the money? She did a great intro to all the basics and what you need to know to write as it says there, a winning proposal. Lots of good tips and tricks on that. Um, and then we did a session, follow-up session, specifically talking about the different grants that we offer here at the Library Commission, our continuing education grants, training grants, and library improvement grants. Um, so if you wanted to know the kind of things that are available through us, that will give you good um, information about that. I also, just in December, this session on E-rate, which is another way to get funding from, um, basically it's discount program, discounted funding through the federal government for your telephone and internet access. You can get a discount on that. Um, so I did a session on getting started on that. Um, for this upcoming year, this, the process has already started. When I did it back in December, you could get started for the new year. But this will give you a good idea if you're not involved in it yet about what the steps are to go through if you're thinking about doing it for the next fiscal year. And even if you are involved in it right now, what you should be doing next. And just as a um, reminder, there right now for those libraries who are doing e, who are in the E-rate process this year, there is a form that is due. It's the 471 form for requesting your services. Yeah, they're all it's government forms. They're all numbered. <laughs> um, the deadline to submit that form was tomorrow, February 11th. But due to these huge storms that we have had, these snowstorms, <laughs> snow apocalypse, whatever you want to call it, I've seen that on the news. They yes, that on like CNN.com. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as you know, the East Coast is being devastated and buried under feet and feet and feet of snow. Um, they actually extended the deadline for this form. So if you are in the midst of doing that second form right now, you actually now have till next Friday, February 19th, to submit it. Um, they realized that because of the snow, some libraries maybe just could not get it done. They've had too much to deal to deal with, and I'm sure them themselves being in Washington's you know, FCC base there, they're digging out as well. <laughs> so that deadline has been extended um, a week. I, I saw an article this morning that said, you know, if D.C. is going to, if the Capitol is going to shut down whenever there's snow, they should move mm -hmm. the Capitol to the Midwest where we know how to deal with it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they should just go south or somewhere where there's no yeah. snow. Yeah. Well, then they get hurricanes. Hurricanes, <laughs> right. Yeah, good point. <laughs> um, and then just recently, um, Last week, our most recent one, um, USDA has um, 
they've always had funding opportunities for libraries, um, grants and loans that you can get through them. And we actually had um, Troy Gagner from the Nebraska USDA Rural Development Office come in and tell us about things that are available through them. Um, as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which some people have heard of as the stimulus program, um, they have been told to give more money to libraries specifically and get things built up and developed. So they have a lot of funding now specifically targeted to libraries. Um, rural libraries specifically is what they're working with. So there is money available. There's funding, grants, and loans available through the USDA. There is a deadline for applying for these. So if you want to get in on this, definitely go and watch his presentation. It was just last week. The recording is up there. His slides are available. Um, a link to the USDA Rural Development Nebraska website is up there. Um, take a look at it because they have done lots of different things. They can do buildings. They give, they are some libraries you'll, go, you'll see in his presentation a bunch of libraries in Nebraska that they did um, gave money to either build new libraries, put additions on, um, get um, energy improvement, do equipment purchases, lots of things, renovations. There's all sorts of options out there for it. But there is a deadline to getting your application in to them. And, and that deadline is measured in like weeks, right? I mean, it's um, soon, isn't it? Well, no, that, that's something different. That, oh, you know, oh, okay. This is a whole separate program. I think the deadline for his is sometime in the fall, but oh, don't okay. quote me on that. Watch his recording and look at his slides. <laughs> but it is this year. I mean, this is that American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. It's a quick thing. You may be hearing about it in the, in, in the news that form um, applications need to be submitted and they need to be submitted now. You need to get on top of these things. Now, one thing you did mention, which is something to think about, is yes, you need to get in touch with him if you do want to get something done now. However, it's okay that you aren't like building the library this year. You just need to get your application in to then get the money and then you can start doing your building and your planning, you know. It, it doesn't have to be shovel ready. Exactly. Well. And you know, to to use another government <laughs> term It does that you do have to have or have a plan, like an official here's what we're doing, here's what we need to add, how much you, it's you can't just cost. say we want a million dollars handed over. Not really. No. no. <laughs> But really lots, lots of good money out there available that just that lots of times you don't know about it. Um, so take a look at that. Contact Troy. His info is all in there um, from that session that he just did for us last week. No, and speaking of government resources, of course. Back on camera. Um, hi. <laughs> Um, we've done a couple of different sessions. Our government um, document staff here has done um, government information that you can use, free resources online. It's a general session on that. There's a lot of good resources out there that you may know about, but they highlighted a lot of those. And then they did a specific se session on American Fact Finder, looking at U.S. Census information for your community. And this can be very useful when you are applying for those grants and applications and things to get money. They want to know what is your community like. Um, who are the people in your community? Do you have any vulnerable populations, um, minorities, um, the elderly, whatever? Um, or and sometimes, so they might want to know that information, so you can dig it up out of this um, using the American Fact Finder. Or there might be certain requirements that you have to meet certain census information, like you have to have a certain amount of poverty in your area before you can even apply for a certain grant. Um, so this will get you good information about that kind of thing to get the um, numbers and stats that you might need for all these applications. And, and I remember I hosted that, Beth did it, mm -hmm. and I, I like to think I know how to search databases and stuff, but if you're going to use a service, watch this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is not always exactly obvious where you need to go to, to pull out the data that you want. It, it's better than it used to be. I remember that site 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> You know where you you had to know the the tape number practically oh, to, to to get yeah. the data off of. Um, it is a little better, and they have a lot of pre uh, pre prepared data mm -hmm. and charts. So you like literally put in your zip code or your school district, and and it'll do things for you. So uh, nice. definitely, yeah. if you want census numbers, watch this session. Yeah, it'll get you where you need to be. Cool. Okay, um, these two sessions I put together, um, basically about the job of being a librarian, um, a couple of things we've done on that. Um, the Library and Information Services program was revamped uh, this summer. It was actually in June when we did the session. Uh, Marty McGee, one of the instructors for the program, came in and talked about some of the changes. 
and this was um, previously had been the Library Technical Assistant Program has now been renamed the Library and Information Services Associate Degree Program. Um, but she came and talked about so there some of the changes that they've done, introducing you to some of the instructors. They had some little videos of some of them. I remember that was very cool. Um, but just basically talking about this, they have the online distance education format that you can use as well. So if you can't come to the classes. Um, you can do them online. Um, it's um, hosted by Central Community College in um, Grand Island now, but as I said, it's on lots of different campuses and um, the distance education program part of it. So if you're interested in getting your associate's degree in um, library and information services, that would be the session to take a look at, especially since they've changed the program from what it used to be. Um, and then we had um, Emily Nimskant, our cataloging Cataloger. library, <laughs> cataloger. Uh, yeah, just cataloging the brain. I didn't know what the title was. An all around wonderful person. <laughs> yeah. Web person, whatever, yeah. Um, Emily Nimsikant, she's our newest um, staff member. She did a session on cataloging on a shoestring. Very important, useful information. How can you get a hold of free MARC records for your online catalog? Um, there are lots of company, you know, services you can pay for. You can get MARC records through OCLC. You can get them directly from some of the book vendors that you do, that you purchase your books from at a cost as well. But there are also free resources out there. You can save a lot of money by searching out these ones and getting your MARC records from them rather than paying for them. Um, if it's something that your budget doesn't, you know, just can't allow for um, at all, or just currently can't allow for as a new thing because you know everyone's budgets are getting cut, frozen, etc. <laughs> you wouldn't know anything about yeah. that. <laughs> um, so definitely, if you're looking for some information on that, Emily did a really great session on um, how to get a hold of these sources and lots of places where you can get them at no cost. Then we also have here just a kind of roundup of a lot, some of the services and things that the library <coughs> admission specifically offers, and we did sessions on that, of course. Um, Bibliostat Collect is where we collect our statistics for our public library our public library stats through. Um, way back at the beginning of the year, right before they were due last January, um, was when um, John Felton did a session, our stats person, on um, how it, the at interface. Just like a lot of things we've talked about today have changed. <laughs> they updated and changed how it works, and he just get into that, and then also explain why we collect these statistics, what they can be used for. So if you're at a public library and this is the kind of thing we're asking you for, definitely take a look at that. Um, I think he's, we need new statistics every year, and I assume they'll be coming up again soon since he did it in January last year. Um, Nebraska Learns 2.0, that was something that Michael and I were both involved in. Um, we did, what was it, four months that our... Original. Yeah, the original program mm -hmm. um, by like 23 weeks. Yeah, like we that. did our uh, 23 things type program where we gave people different activities and Let's exercises see. to do yeah. <laughs> on, uh. on different things that you can use in libraries. Similar to the things in the libraries, they are changing how to use YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all sorts of different things. Um, the pages are still up there for people to look at if you want to go back. The program, that program itself is done. <coughs> because um, it had a beginning and end. However, we are now continuing it with an ongoing Nebraska Learners 2.0 program, where if you go and look at that session, I think we announced, announced it. Yeah. Well, I think we announced that it was going to be going monthly. I don't yeah. think it had started yet. Yeah. Um, um, so that program was where we did a new one every week or every two weeks. Or yeah, that, that, we that, that was 23 things in like 18 weeks right. or something like that. And now we've, continue, we've decided, we get, a lot of people who finished it up loved it and said, I don't want to stop learning. I want to learn about more things like this. Are, you know, too, I'm too bad it's ending. So we did came up with, um, borrowing some idea from other states that have done this, doing a monthly Nebraska Learns 2.0 topic. So every month we have a new thing that you can learn. I can't remember what this month is. Something about video casting? Uh, screencasting. screencasting. I think it's screencasting. Yeah, Susan is this month that Susan, and every month you have one that you can learn. So you have the whole month to read up on it, see what the web blog post is, do the activities, um, and earn CE credit for it if you want to, or just to learn what's mm -hmm. up. Um, so if you go to that session, you can see what it's about. And if you go on our website, you can look for Nebraska Learners 2.0, and you'll find the blog website that we are using for our monthly ones. So keep an eye on that and check in on it every beginning of each month and see what the new thing is and see if you want to try it out. Um, Nebraska Memories is our service our, that we have had for a long time, too. <laughs> we have, um, 
digitized images that we have from libraries and historical societies about Nebraska history is available in there. So we did a session on that, um, introducing you to it, just updating you on it. If you know of any library or historical society that has more pictures type things that they would want digitized and added to the collection, that can give you some information on how to do that. So if you have those kind of things available, very historical type things is mainly what it is. Um, meet the librarians behind the ready at nlc.state.ne.us. That's the email for whenever you're looking for help and advice from our reference staff here at the Library Commission. That session was about what they do for you. They answer reference questions for both librarians and citizens. They do interlibrary loan down there. So they gave a nice overview. Lisa Kelly, the head down of the department down there, gave a nice overview of what they do um, downstairs. I say downstairs because they're downstairs from us. You guys don't care about that. <laughs> um, but they are who you contacted for help and advice and that you can go to them to, as kind of a backup reference and backup interlibrary loan for your libraries. I thought you were going to say something. No. Nope. Okay. Um, Moodle is a online courseware software program that you can use and that the Library Commission is using for some of our courses. Uh, Laura Johnson, our continuing education coordinator, is using it for um, basic skills classes and she did an introduction to that earlier this year um, in September um, as she was just getting started with using it for one of the basic skills classes. So at that point she's doing still testing it but it seems to have worked out very successfully. You can do a lot of things online with it. Um, the next basic skills class organization of materials will be offered using Moodle this spring. Um, it will, there will also still be on-site classes in six locations across the state, she said. So if you don't want to do the online version, there will still be the on-site, you know, in-person courses as well. But it will also be offered through um, Moodle. Um, so if you can't get to some of the on-site locations for in-person, you could get your basic skills class for organization of materials done online from you know, convenience of your own home or library. Um, and so keep an eye out for an announcement that the registrations are available. It's coming in the spring um, and she's working on getting all that scheduled together. And the final thing we have here is discount shopping with the Library Commission. Um, this is a session that we had Susan Nisley here at the Library Commission do. Um, as some libraries know, we offer the free databases through Nebraska Access that libraries can, act, can get at our cost, but we have lots of other services, products, databases that we get discounts for you via the being the Library Commission, meaning if you purchase these things through us um, you, because you're going through our account or through us as the um, purchaser for you, you'll get a discount on it. And she just went through an overview of the things that we have. We have, um, as I said, databases that you can get discounts on that are not part of Nebraska Access, so you just subscribe to them yourself and you um, get a cheaper price because you're going through us. Um, products, books, um, book carts, those kind of things, equipment, furniture for your library. Um, conferences, we give discounts to conferences to attend if you if you, you know, register through us. So if you're looking to try and save some money in some areas, and who isn't, of course. <laughs> um, Call us first. Yeah, check out that session. You'll find out a lot of the things that some libraries don't realize that we actually have these things available, that we do have this huge website, a list of things, people that we have, vendors and companies that we have contacted and made deals with um, on your behalf that you can get some, um, save some money on some of these things that you buy regularly. Yeah, I think we have just like a disc, a percentage discount off of pretty much Brodart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and so if if you order from Brodart or Gaylord or any of those, exactly. check our site. I mm -hmm. mean, you might get 20% off. I'm not promising anything. I don't know the numbers. <laughs> um, but, <clears throat> you know, that's... Save, save yourself a couple of bucks. Yeah, and it depends on what you need to do for each one. Rather, do you just go through us to purchase, or when you just purchase yourself, do you mention, like, a code number, or do you talk to a specific person at their company? That session will tell you all of that so you know um, what you're supposed to do. And this is all on our website as well, too. So um, she, this, uh, this session gives you the intro, the fact that we do this, and then you can go to our website to see the specific details about everything that we offer <laughs> <laughs> discounts on. So that is a pretty good overview of everything that all the sessions that we have done this past year. Um, was that all 48? It didn't count. <laughs> 
I think so. You think so? Okay. Was anybody either. counting? <laughs> if anybody was counting, uh, please let us know in the Q and A. Um, um, so, I don't know. I think I did it all. Uh, did you want to mention the new? E oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, good point. Yes, we. Oh, is that the new? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Janet, uh, our one of our computer people here, mentions in the questions and answers session in the go to webinar that the session on ready. This is the replacement for ready. Yeah. I'm mumbling. Sorry. The heck did I call it? Meet the people behind ready at. Yeah, meet the staff behind the ready at NLC that state da da da. We do have new email addresses here at the Library Commission. I should update that session. I'll get to it. Anyway, and <laughs> so far the old emails still work, but they're going to eventually not. So you would want to update your information, and I will update it on the website for that recording as well, that the new email address for ready is actually nlc.ask at nebraska.gov. nlc.ask at nebraska.gov. And Michael just popped it up there in a notepad for you. Um, so that is the email that you want to start using instead of the ready at NLC dot da, 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 da. <laughs> um, so um, just to be aware of that. Thank you very much, Jan. I knew there was our, our emails have changed. I did not know what their specific one had changed yeah. to though. I, We've all changed to Nebraska.gov emails um, by going with the state um, email system and I wasn't sure what ready. Yeah, so actually if if you get a chance, if you know you email people at the commissioner, you have any of us in your address books, um, please check. <laughs> and make sure that they are the uh, at nebraska.gov version. Um, as I think Krista just mentioned, the, the old email addresses are still forwarding to us, and most of us are kind of on a case-by-case -case basis telling people, hey, by the way, our email address changed six months ago. Yeah. Um, but one day the state will just flip a switch. And we won't be able to forward anymore. And we will yes. not get messages sent to those old addresses. So, um, you know, just anybody listening to this, check your address books. It's generally first name dot last name at nebraska.gov. There mm -hmm. are a few notable exceptions, um, like Diane here. It's Diane R. Wells because there was a different Diane name. Wells working mm -hmm. for the state, so she had to use her middle initial. Uh, Emily has her her maiden name, her uh, middle name in there. Oh, um, okay. There's a, there's a few um, notable exceptions, but you can always double check this on our yeah, website. Um, exactly on the commission website, all of our new emails should already be on there. I believe. Yes, yep. like mine right here on the slide. Okay. And I said, yeah, and the last thing is cut off. And okay, I'll, I'll type it into that. Oh, I think it's cut off because of the um, the the toolbar showing up. Okay. Oh, is yeah. that there? We go. There we go. <coughs> um. Okay. So, any questions about any of <laughs> any of the sessions? Cameras over there. <laughs> um, that I've mentioned. Um, that was just a nice overview of everything we've done over the past year, 2009 sessions. Um, we think they've been useful. We've, as I said, we've gotten actually a lot of good uh, feedback, suggestions. Um, no, nobody said they're never going to attend one ever again. Not that I've heard. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, we do do our Encompass Live is offered every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, generally for an hour. Um, it's recorded as this one is being so, and as you can, as you saw, all these are archive sessions, so you can listen to it if you haven't been able to attend the live session. Um, I do encourage suggestions. Give me ideas for things you want to hear about. Um, if you want to request something on a topic, is there something that you are interested in and you don't know about it or you've heard about it and you want to know more, um, drop me an email, call me up, whatever, and I'll see if I can get someone to speak on it, whether it's something from the commission or anything out there in the library, in the Nebraska library world. Basically, the idea of Encompass Live is anything of interest to librarians in Nebraska, We'll try it. We can talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and my tech talk sessions, I also will take questions in advance. I got a couple yes. last time. Yes. Although if you send them to Krista, she will, you know, happily pass right. them yeah. along. She knows where I am. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if, if you think it's something like it's just a, a, a question you think I can answer in a tech talk versus a very large topic that might take a whole session, you know, well, feel free just either. to, you know, email me directly or just funnel it all through Krista. That's, yeah. that's fine, too. We'll, mm -hmm. I'll get it. 
Um, or if there's something you want to share with the rest of the Nebraska there Library you community. Um, you want to do a session on something you're doing interesting in your library or some organization you're involved in, give me a call or an email and we can maybe get you set up to do a session. Um, my email camera, address... Camera optional. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't let the camera scare <laughs> don't you. Be um. Um, my, that's my email address, of course, the newnebraska.gov one and the 800 number here for the Library Commission. You can contact me for, with any of that information that you want. Um, and also be aware that I do keep an eye on what's going on out in the Nebraska library world. So if I see you might be doing inter something interesting, I may be contacting you to ask you to come and present. I've done that before. <laughs> yep. Or I might try to get you on the phone for a session. Yes. yes. Um, now, see, I can't. Apparently the URL down here is kind of hiding for our web page. Um, but you can, um, if you can't see that, it was on the first slide. It'll be available on the PowerPoints when I go up. I'll also link to it on the recording. And also if you just go to the Commission website and search for Encompass Live, you'll find the web page that has all of the upcoming sessions and a link to all of our archive sessions, all the ones that I talked about today. So there's anything else? You're welcome, Laura. I'm glad you uh, showed up today. Hope it was very useful information. Janet loved the camera. <laughs> We're glad to finally have a camera that we've been able to jury rig for this too. We've had a lot of questions and requests for why can't we see you on camera anymore, but we figured it out so that we can do that. Jumping in. I, I thought we did these things online so they didn't have to look at us. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, thank you very much for attending today. Um, please give me a call or email if you have any questions about our Encompass Live or, as I said, any suggestions or ideas for future ones. Um, thank you very much. And All right. Bye-bye.